Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, a warm welcome to Muslima Insight. Back by popular demand due to the various requests from members from our respective communities, we thought it not only appropriate but absolutely necessary to recap a topic that we've touched in the beginning of the series, namely the effects of apartheid on our psyche. And with me in studio to share with us their experience, their knowledge and their insight on this very vast topic. I've got two ladies with us in studio. Assalamu and welcome Sister Suraya Bibi Khan, who mm. is an um, activist as well as a mother, a wife, and a very active social wo- um, person involved in community work, as well as Sister Su- um, Sharmila Garni, who is also an activist, very involved as well in community work, mother and wife. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to both of you. I really thank you for taking out the time and joining us here on set today. Um, As I've mentioned, it is a topic that is very vast, yet it is very important that we try to do justice to this particular topic in this program, inshallah. And I would like to start off by asking if you both can share with us and the viewers um, how did you come into being an activist, a political activist? What happened in your life that you became part of the struggle and what role did you play in it? Sharmila. Shukran, um, Adila. I'll start off um, by saying that I grew up in a township in the Western Cape, Cape Town in particular, um, where our parents were forcibly removed, particularly from District 6, but also um, in our community going to school as young children, and that is primary school and high school, we had to stare down the barrels of guns Mm. because people were protesting at the time. And that is how the involvement started from a young age and to see the suffering of our communities and and, and the topic that we're going to speak on, you know, various researches that has been done indicates the effects of forced removals Mm -hmm. and violence perpetrated by the then um, apartheid police upon young children and communities. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started from. I joined the Muslim Students Association. Mm -hmm. We recruited into the Muslim Students Association and then into the bigger organizations um, that stemmed out of the Muslim Students Association. And Auntie Bibi will maybe Mm -hmm. mention those like the Call of Islam and and those type of organizations. Then after that into um, formations where everybody came together into the UDF including the labor movement Mm -hmm. and then eventually into the current uh, um, um, party that's leading our country, the ANC. But also as um, in my working days then as a trade unionist, my mom was also um, in the factory. She worked Mm -hmm. in the factories and she belonged to the Garmin Workers Union. Um, So I don't know if it's an automatic progression Mm -hmm. um, from the parents that we had. I then became a trade unionist as well. Mm-hmm. Thereafter, um, I worked in the finance industry, being a gender activist in the trade union and leading negotiations in salaries and um, as well as the, the region. Mm-hmm. I then worked for the South African Communist Party on the transformation um, with other um, people in the party on the transformation of the financial sector. Mm-hmm. And yeah. That's just a brief background. Currently, um, doing uh, development work, we do funding through the labor federations for um, job creation, poor communities. Um, we work around the country in the deepest of rural areas, mm-hmm. in other um, rural areas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that is briefly. Wow, mashallah. Yeah. That's really, you can see in what you've mentioned, there's a, there's a lifetime of very good experiences that we can learn from. Um, uh, Sister Suraya? I think it starts up about the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. because it was Safai Town. Mm-hmm. It was the removals in Safai Town. I was very young at that stage. So didn't really understand until later years mm-hmm. when I got married and then I started looking back and understanding mm-hmm. what it was that my father and my mum instilled in me. Mm-hmm. Because we, I grew up in Everton. Mm-hmm. And Everton, it hadn't the... The uh, 61 uh, took, that took place in Sharpville was in later years. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
Everton was this wonderful environment of being next to Goko and Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Malifi and growing up with parents, everyone was your parent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you didn't understand and you, I still do not understand and I don't think I ever will understand racism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not from an Islamic perspective, not ever, because I grew up in that free spirited way. Mm -hmm. And my dad didn't have the beacon, so he came from the University of Life. Mm -hmm. But his wisdom was far-reaching. He instilled simple values. And, and my mum would be that, that um, mother that you can go and sit on a lap no matter how old you were. Mm -hmm. And didn't then have the opportunity because of the forced removals and before, because of all that my dad and my mum had lost. Mm -hmm. you, one didn't have the opportunity to finish schooling. Mm -hmm. You know, to do your matric and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think for me... That has always spurred me on mm -hmm. in relation to looking back all the time at Islam and taking from our Nabi Sallallahu mm -hmm. So I don't feel in any way that it is a problem when it comes to the level of education. Of course, you do encourage your children to learn and, mm -hmm. and study forward. But in that way, when they took it up, um, when, when the children were of age of, of two or three, you know, my baby, and then went in fully into mm -hmm. the what was then the UDF, mm -hmm. went to a, um, a meeting at the Ramakrishna Hall and heard this amazing person, Umbayez Nodia, mm -hmm. standing there and talking about if he could, he could die happy, knowing that some other person from his group, his race group, from Afrikaner background, would follow in his footsteps, he would feel he has done his work. Sure. that one person could take over from him. Then there's Murphy Marubi. The UDF, there were so many levels that you were involved at meetings and things like that, and that was my university of life. Hmm. That is where I learned about what really was done in the name of apartheid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I, I can easily relate to Madiba and our leadership that, that followed, you know, about the sense of forgiveness, the sense of healing, the sense of bringing, bringing people together. Mm -hmm. and, and that is Islam, sure. you know. So it brings that sense of togetherness. It was then where the UDF and the fet FETRO started, you know, we, we got involved as women and mm -hmm. wanted to change the world mm -hmm. and do things as women. And therefore, my sticking to my guns and working in the sector of women mm -hmm. Mainly, you know, gender mm -hmm. issues, okay, here and there. So it would be s the, the civic associations mm -hmm. of Lanesia, it would be civic association of Johannesburg that became Sanko afterwards, Fetro that came about, Sawi. We started a women's uh, empowerment group of Women's Institute for Leadership. Mm -hmm. Development and democracy, and Umbay said, Mayala Mark, no, that Villafroans, you know. Mm -hmm. How can you do this wild woman? You said, Yeah, Umbay, but with a double D. Mm -hmm. Democracy and development goes together, you mm -hmm. know. So mine was always in the field of doing development work mm -hmm. and wanting to change and transform mm -hmm. because of the peaceful manner in which our country turned over from. Sure from where it was, one mm -hmm. holds on to that memory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why the call of Islam was fundamental in the early 90s for me, because prior to that, I was, I was UDF. <laughs> <laughs> I was like very clear that I'm, I'm, I'm mixed. I can't stick to any one mm -hmm. particular group if it's a race group. I want to work with everyone mm -hmm. because we're all human beings mm -hmm. that Allah Ta'ala created. Mm -hmm. I can clearly see from what you both have said, the, the growing up during the, the, the apartheid regime, it has clearly shaped and formed where your life was going to lead, plus the fact that you're obviously Muslim and Allah Ta'ala has chosen you for this path because clearly you've played both a big role in where we are today, uh, where we find ourselves as Muslims today. And um, what I would like to ask is, in your experience, looking at the effects of apartheid, what effect did it have on social cohesion? You know, I was checking it out this morning and realised... The UDF was social cohesion. Mm -hmm. It was bringing together people from various 
backgrounds and groups. It was faith-based. It was uh, businesses coming together. It was your unions. It was your workers, mm -hmm. your laypers, and it was across the board. So it brought everyone together mm -hmm. on a common purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that purpose was to rid our country of apartheid. Sure. Uh, on that note, it is unfortunately time for us to take a short break. Hold that thought. We back after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Today in Muslima Insight, we are once again recapping the topic, the effects of apartheid on our psyche. Before the break, uh, we were looking at the question of how apartheid affected social cohesion. Um, Sister Suraya, you were busy explaining to us and we had to go to an uh, ad break. Can you just recap for us? I know, you know, because the UDF started in the Western Cape. And the call of Islam was started in the Western Cape. Mm -hmm. The manner in which it started, I think Shamila would be best place to explain on that. For, for us, when it came to Johannes, to, to what was called Transvaal then, to Gauteng now, the manner in which pe people rallied around, mm -hmm. you would see the meetings and everybody was on a very high moral Back, you know, the moral high ground was with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was apartheid was wrong mm -hmm. for anybody. Absolutely. You know, to have that sense of arrogance, mm -hmm. of superiority, mm -hmm. which is what it was, you know, yeah. uh, for my Aya and for Yoni, you know, kind of thing. So people rallied around that, mm -hmm. you know, and that was our strength. The social cohesion we need to build back into society now. Because people have split up since mm -hmm. apartheid. It was, um, it's no longer where we care for one another. There's a lot of selfishness that has come into society, if I may say that mm -hmm. very bluntly. Mm -hmm. We're not as caring as what we were in those days. Sure, and definitely. it's as if when you, when you struggle, you care more. Yeah, it is. Uh, Shall we look? Yeah. I think there was more negative mm -hmm. than what there was positive mm -hmm. in the effects that mm -hmm. apartheid had on mm -hmm. social co cohesion. Mm -hmm. the, what I can say, what, I don't know if you want to view it as a positive, but for us growing up in, as a Muslim family with all the whole road, um, all the families in the road were Christian, but we grew up as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that was, you know, amazing for us. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, the support, we had to rely on each other for any little thing, be it illness or the person across the road or next door didn't have a piece of bread mm -hmm. or you yourself didn't have a piece of bread. Your Christian neighbor would say, I can give you this because this is halal. You can't have that mm -hmm. because that is not halal. Mm -hmm. And so be it with whatever celebration there was, and that was the, 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 the social coercion within those communities at the time, mm -hmm. because we had to rely on each other. But not only that, um, they looked after each other. It was our, the adab and the akhlaq towards mm -hmm. your, 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 your... Your fellow human. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was that you, they would look out for you, mm -hmm. and if your parents weren't at home, they would tell your parents if you were naughty or if you were rude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and that was, I think, a little bit of the positive out of it. Mm -hmm. But the negative part of it was that you knew that you couldn't go across to the other side of the road because you were inferior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is the mindset that we need to deal with mm -hmm. still because there is still after effects mm -hmm. of this. And, um, you know, going forward, how are we going to build this social coercion again, because now you are, we are an international community. Mm -hmm. And I think what had happened was that we weren't exposed to the outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So post-1994, there was this big open world out there. Mm -hmm. And like Auntie Bibi said, it became about me and how I can achieve mm -hmm. more and accumulate more. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I be better than my neighbor than being you know, 
help my neighbor mm. to achieve what I am achieving, or my sister or my brother. That is all part, because what is the principles of, of social coercion is mm. a community with diverse backgrounds, mm. but has got the same objective because, and, and I'll go later through the principles of that, because ultimately, we come from the same roots. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Auntie Bibi said, we all come from the same creator, right? And also we belong to, to the community of mankind. Mm -hmm. So, and in the Quran, Allah states very clearly that you would want for yourself what you would want for your brother. But today mm -hmm. what we, we see, and I don't know if it is, and, and, and even within violence, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's effects of, of, of disorganization mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. coercion of, 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 of communities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, and also the after effects of the vi amount of violence that was in those townships, in, in, in the schools, in your communities, mm -hmm. because of people being broken apart. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when my parents, I wasn't born then, but when my parents moved into the area, the township that was established, mm -hmm. when they were given homes to move out of District 6 to go and live in, in a township, which was called Windermere at the time, it was a mixed community. Mm -hmm. But then some of those people were moved out to Guguleto and to Langa because, and that is how it was with the effects of apartheid was that you don't belong together. Mm. Would you say it, th this um, relates to the so social uh, disintegration and the violence that then followed? Because obviously people were living in peace, yes. in harmony next to each other, and apartheid came and then this pulling apart happened. Exactly, and, and, and that, is, that is the way of divide and rule. Mm -hmm. Because if you divide a united force, you can rule over them. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you can see it in the effects of what is happening in the world today as well. And that is what happened then. Because, you know, there was no differentiation when people lived together. Mm -hmm. We were from the same community, ultimately striving to survive, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, through poverty and, 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 and what, the working class and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And when people are segregated, say, you are better than the next person, mm. you know, that will stick with you. And that's why I say up until today, you can see some of the effects that it have, mm -hmm. because um, you can hear comments being made also. Mm -hmm. And I was actually listening to an to, uh, interview this morning, and I, you know, my heart just went into my throat because the person was saying, um, the lady that, that commented, phoned into the interview, said that, um, yeah, we mustn't make the Nasara and the, the, the Yahudi our friends and they're against us. And, and subhanAllah, that is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us. Mm -hmm. They're all creation of Allah. In each community, you get evil and you get good. Mm -hmm. sure. But what we were taught was you look for the good in the mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm before you look for the bad in the person. And that is how we grew up, and that was principles that our parents had taught us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, this is what we are trying now to say, that we are one community. Mm -hmm. We come from different backgrounds, different cultures, different religions, mm -hmm. but we are one, mm -hmm. because we live in one country. We don't know any other country. Mm -hmm. Our roots aren't anywhere else. And this sure. is how we can build on social coercion because at the end of the day, everybody will benefit. It will also assist with the crime, the crime that is in our communities right now because it's our children. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. nobody else's children. Mm -hmm. So we have to look inward mm -hmm. before we look outward mm -hmm. and then put the blame on other people. And, and I think what is important for me today as we sit here is to validate what people lived through because with that validation healing can happen for the simple fact just to be heard this is what my parents went through this is what i grew up with and like you have, have touched on the racism aspect the hurt that it causes mm -hmm. the arrogance from the other party to bring these aspects across um sister um Surya, from your side you know shamila as shamila is talking adila i'm reflecting a, a lot because in in the days when we were really struggling and it wasn't easy you were called names and you were worried at what time would you be picked up from work 
at what stage are you involved with something that your partner that you're sleeping with doesn't know what you are involved in mm -hmm. because you're doing things that from a security point of view you are placing other women's lives in danger mm -hmm. so i was in a precarious position with even my children sure. because my children didn't know they didn't m have much of a mother that mm -hmm. would be normal mm -hmm. in other people's lives mm -hmm. but you you did it because uh, there was such a great goal that you wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. take it so for granted when we say we have a democratic, non-racial, non-sexist South Africa. We are united in our diversity. That's the preamble in the constitution. We fought hard for that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. Then there were times when one was so angry that you would have done something and then, you know, the label that comes very easily in the international arena, especially to Muslims, mm -hmm. is you terrorist, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would say to some people, but you know, your terrorist might be my freedom fighter, mm -hmm. you know, because the way we needed to look at things in South Africa, mm -hmm. South Africa has set the standard for so much in the world mm -hmm. on how it is not easy to bring about peace. It's easier to pick up that weapon mm -hmm. and to get angry Mm -hmm. and to beat a woman. <clears throat> but on the whole, it takes much more out of you to be calm, mm -hmm. to look at the process of what you can do to heal that person mm -hmm. instead of aggravating the situation. Absolutely. It is that matter of, of looking and acknowledging who am I and what do I need to do to become a better person. Once again, it's time for us to go to an ad break. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslimah Inside. Um, Andi Suraya, before the break, we were touching on some of the effects that apartheid had on the social disintegration, the violence that followed. Can you just elaborate for us um, on what you were saying? You know, Shamila, if one looks at the point of the call of Islam, how it was established, and that broad social cohesion of everyone coming together to form the UDF. And then one takes it to an international level and say, what is the United Nations? Mm -hmm. The United Nations tries to bring that about. Mm -hmm. But you have bullies in there, you know, as, as you have at any time in any situation. Mm -hmm. But people are coming to South Africa to find out how did we deal mm -hmm. with the whole question of what, apart, what was on our statute books, mm -hmm. what was practiced by law in this country, and yet in their countries, it wasn't on their statute books. It's mm -hmm. not in their law, but mm -hmm. they practice it. Mm -hmm. Society practice practices it. it. So in that way, we are giving the lead in many ways. Sure. But it's so sad because we're such a young democracy mm -hmm. to pl place such a heavy responsibility mm -hmm. on us in South Africa. I want to come in there, but surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom chose South Africa for a purpose, for a reason. Because the question that I would like to ask you, in that being a Muslim, how did the Quran and being a Muslim come into play for you in this whole struggle? Because we survived it, and like you say, we are now the front runners, we are the leaders in this. What can we say to the people out there? What, did, what helped you through this whole process? Adila, my like I said, you know, we came from humble beginnings and my mum and dad were not so perhaps well versed in school, your secular mm -hmm. education, but they knew Islam because it was oral. Mm -hmm. It was passed on. You learned how to read the Quran. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand what it's saying, but your essence of being a Muslim, mm -hmm. you embraced the Quran. Mm -hmm. You embraced what was imparted to you in a way that you knew that it was you stand up for truth, mm -hmm. you stand up for justice. Sure. Call of Islam was established to stand for justice mm -hmm. against oppression, mm -hmm. even if it's our own, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And in that way embodied a lot of what one could say is, you know, every Muslim could say, yes, we identify. 
-hmm. We could identify with what was coming out. And it was a few of the brothers that took the role. They they weren't well um they weren't well accepted mm -hmm. in the broader Muslim community mm -hmm. because there was that element of fear that you must obey, you know, mm -hmm. the law of the country and blah, blah, blah. And there was a contesting of views and opinions, mm -hmm. which was healthy, mm -hmm. you know, because it, Allah Ta'ala gave us minds to think, man, yeah. not to be followers, followers all the time. We should be leading mm -hmm. and lead by example. If we really follow our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would any of the things that was being done in the name of a party been ex would, have, would it have been accepted? Mm -hmm. No. Sure. We would have stood firm and said, and that's what we, that's alhamdulillah, right. then had a group of brothers from Cape Town coming to, to Transvaal and engaging, and that's how mm -hmm. they spread it. Mm -hmm. But it was very mm -hmm. small because people were scared. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was an element of fear, Shamila. Mm -hmm. Not many people, if we look at the population in those days, we were but, but point, point, point zero. Zero one percent mm -hmm. that participated act as activists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear now how every person was involved in their small way in, in standing up and saying no it's in themselves. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, in themselves saying this is not, not acceptable. Right. Mm -hmm. But really on the front line. To be on grassroots level involved. And and being there on the front line when the police are chasing you sure. and and you are having to deal with situations. And you say to yourself, Life Allah Ta'ala strengthened us. Mm -hmm. Allah Ta'ala gave us so much strength to stand firm against that oppression, sure. which was done in the name of a race. That's you it. know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a better. Because that Arrogance. is what apartheid, mm -hmm. the effects of apartheid, the, the mere fact that we now have to work so hard for people to be installed with a sense of dignity, of being a human being and knowing that even if you're a beggar in you there, you are a human you being. You are worthy. You are worthy as a human being. Where a person with a disability, Allah Ta'ala knows what Allah Ta'ala made the child be disabled. There's a special poem, in fact, mm -hmm. that the people with disabilities have. Mm -hmm. And they say, a heaven's special gift. Mm -hmm. Where Allah Ta'ala chooses, the, you are chosen mm -hmm. to be the parents of that child. A beautiful poem. I shared it with some people in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they put it in the newspaper. We have now to work beyond our borders. Mm -hmm. But we are sitting with such an influx mm -hmm. of people on this continent coming into South Africa. And the diverse... Uh, versions of um, of Islam <laughs> that yeah. we're having to deal with mm -hmm. is, is, is sometimes, you know, can we can we manage this without being judgmental? Mm -hmm. is, is frightening. <laughs> Sharmila, Sharmila, from your yeah. side? Yeah, look, f I think also the strength that we draw, even in the Muslim Students Association at that time, mm -hmm. um, I was still at, at school in long time ago, <laughs> was from the strength from, from the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. And even in the call of Islam, even up till today, we take particular verses. Mm -hmm. And then we draw the knowledge out of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us through those verses and giving us guidance. Mm -hmm. And that is what would actually happen. Mm -hmm. But also taking from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is how we became strong. Our hearts became strong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us as women also, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. We had many comrades that were arrested and, 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 and tortured and, and sure. you know, all of this. And some of them are no longer with us today. And you remember their families. And then we have also, we had also lost Muslims in the process mm -hmm. that left because their communities condemned them mm. that they were participating in kuffar politics. Yes, sure. And we had to, some of us, um, and we don't take credit because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives hidayah, but with the help of other brothers and sisters, you know, bringing them back slowly mm. and all of that, and the support that has been provided. So that is where we came from, mm -hmm. and it was from the strong foundation also that our parents, they might not have been uh, um, freedom fighters or activists,
but they knew that it was wrong and the foundation that they set for us and the examples that they set for us because in the Western Cape, in Cape Town, our parents used to talk about Sissy Gaul and all the others, our, our Karamats, our, our Mazars, that's they, they mm. were freedom fighters and they would relate that history to us mm -hmm. and therefore as a Muslim our foundation was very strong but also your conscience and your heart, your ruh tells you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that this is not correct and you have to Absolutely. do something. And yes, a lot of uh, communities and a lot of, there was a lot of people today that are sheikhs that were part of this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if I can, if you would allow me to mention a few sheikhs, Siraj Hendricks, we had a, uh, of the Azavia in Cape Town, we had a, a good conversation about his activism in the MSA and the call of Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and many others, you know, um, from the MJC, Sheikh Nazim and all of that, provided the support and it brings back a memory. And I actually, while we were doing, I was doing the research for this, mm -hmm. I pulled out some documents from the Muslim Students Association 7th AGM uh -huh. that was held in the Western Cape in 1979 uh -huh. at the uh, Masjid al-Salam in, in where Sheikh Deen was the masjid. And I remember clearly they came from Durban, um, Johannesburg, all over the country. And it was university students with high school students. And I was a, a high school student mm -hmm. at the time. And we were sitting in the masjid. And I remember clearly, and all we just heard was this burst of fire and uh, um, tear gas coming into the masjid. And, you know, and all Sheikh Deen said was that, Put your trust in the Almighty. That's all you can do. Put your trust in the Almighty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the older students from university protect your younger brothers and sisters. Sure. And this is what we had to go through. But at the end of the day, what Islam teaches us is that if you don't forgive the next person, Allah won't forgive you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's these type of attributes that really pulls us through as Muslims. I mean, sitting and listening to your stories as having grown up as a white Afrikaner in this country, I mean, it's shocking for me to sit and hear this because I was never exposed to it. And I think there are many other people like me when, when they have to hear this for the first time, it's you are taken aback. You, you become speechless because how could they? How could our forefathers do this to another human being? It, it is uh, very, very heart rendering. Um, on that note, it is time for us once again to go to an ad break. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A warm welcome back to Muslima Insight. Before the break, uh, Sister Shamila, you were, like, you were uh, relating to us a very heartening story of how um, shots went off and tear gas was thrown into a masjid. And I mean, if I just have to place myself and my children in a situation like that, what fear goes through the minds and the hearts and the souls of those children and of yourself? Um, coming back to, to what we are discussing, can you relate for us um, what are the mindsets of people still today due to the effect of apartheid on this social disorganization that we find? Look, I, I've done um, some reading up on, 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 on the subject and some mm -hmm. research because there's lots of violence in our communities today. Absolutely. And um, not only violence in the sense of robberies and house break-ins, but also violence. abuse, violence, abuse in the family, you know, uh, um, sibling upon sibling and partners against partners. And what the research actually indicated was that, uh, um, I think it was done by um, Rock, um, that because of the effects and of apartheid had, when people were then sent into, or, or the families were disintegrated and, and, and there was, you know, a migrant labor and families were broken apart. Some were sent very far out of town or wherever they were broken up and, and sent to. It had effects on, 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 on the family, but also on the community at large. 
and the violence that they saw in their communities. Because mm -hmm. what also came out of apartheid, and which was, I mean, uh, I don't know when those, those files will be opened, but the apartheid government used drugs and alcohol to, mm -hmm. to, to undermine our families and to undermine communities. And they were the ones supplying it mm -hmm. and making it available in our communities to subdue the uprising, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get children hooked onto these things. And that caused a lot of violence, gang violence and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And the effects is that growing up in a violent society, um, your child then knows nothing better. Because mm -hmm. that's the conditioning. That's exactly. what they used to. That's what they see exactly. life as. And if they see the mother hitting the father or the mother or the father hitting the mother, they think it's a norm. Mm -hmm. So the violence, it was not all political. Mm -hmm. It was societal as well. But it, became, it was the effect exactly. of, of what the parents lived through. Exactly. Because it's also sometimes out of, how many times out of frustration, mm -hmm. don't you feel like smacking your, mm -hmm. your, your youngster, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is sometimes out of frustration, mm -hmm. you know, People, we had no other way, or communities had no other way to express their anger. Mm -hmm. the it's almost like a sense of helplessness and hopelessness exactly. that there isn't, the, the help is not coming, the, the, exactly. there isn't a resolve. And it's also the sense of disowning who, who Allah Ta'ala made you as. Exactly. You know, that worthiness, that sense of dignity that uh, Auntie Bibi exactly. mentioned earlier. Uh, People were robbed of that. Because so it, it, it stands to reason exactly. why a person will become violent and frustrated because there's disowned parts. Exactly, because if you keep on telling a child you're naughty, you're naughty, the child will then believe all I the am. time. So as communities, we were told that we, you know, we, we're not bright enough, you're not worthy enough, you're, not you're good less enough. a person, yeah. you're not a human being. And sure. all of these things. But it was very selective yeah. even in our own community, yeah. Shamala. It was based yeah. on the color of your pigmentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you were fairer, there was a different way you were treated. Families within themselves adopted yeah. that stance as well. Yeah. You know, and we must acknowledge that. Yeah. We mm -hmm. can blame everything on, on the state and apartheid. But when people took ownership and made yes. apartheid work for them, yeah. so that it was working for them mm -hmm. in corrupting society, Businesses, yeah. you name it, you can across the board name people who you knew benefited yeah. from the previous regime. They had access to the, what was it called, union buildings, not White House, I almost said White House, <laughs> uh, you know, but they had access to parliament and mm -hmm. things like that. That's why the tricameral, when, when the real uh, uprising uh, uh, re-emerged, mm -hmm. you know, with, with because of the tricam right. elections. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you saw youngsters being beaten mm -hmm. in front of you, boots stamped on them and things like that. You saw atrocities that you'd, you don't even want to remember because it affects your psyche mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. you become angry and that's not the response we need today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it means we have to have level minds to say, how do we move forward? forward. Yeah. How do we heal? And that's where Sawid as a platform when we had it in 2003, we were shocked. Mm -hmm. We were absolutely shocked when the Afrikaner women came and told us what they had undergone. Mm -hmm. It was a diverse community in Sawit coming together in 2003 mm -hmm. in those army tents. And we started sharing because we said we needed to, to build onto healing. Mm -hmm. And when those women told us what they had gone through, and what they had experienced. And African women, all women started mm. sharing. And we said, oh, it's so beautiful. Now we can see one another as woman to woman. Mm -hmm. We can mm -hmm. talk to one another and not look at your race or your religion. And talk to one another women mm -hmm. because that's what Sawit is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we do dialogue irrespective mm -hmm. of what level you come from, you engage. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And through that, hopefully, inshallah we will have a better understanding of one another's pain. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. some of us can, can be very open and ex express our pain very easily. Others of us are still very much, it's something, it's like, you know, people were about cancer. Mm -hmm. You didn't share it because mm -hmm. it was, it's mm -hmm. umskamtavis, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not to share because our sisters are still being beaten up. Mm -hmm. And it's got nothing to do mm -hmm. with the party mm -hmm. because it comes from... Those are the effects from, yes. that from, is left from, behind. But I, I, is it the effect or is it us as Muslims mm -hmm. that do not go to Quran mm -hmm. and say that we, we use Quran selectively sometimes, mm -hmm. you know? I think for me it's a combination of, of the conditioning that came from apartheid 
um, all the disowned parts of, of a person's being and the lack of following true guidance. But Because we've got the Quran, we've I got think, the Sunnah, I think, sure, but healing needs to Shamila, take place. I think what we didn't deal with mm -hmm. as Muslims, we tried it. With the, uh, with the Muslim convention mm -hmm. that we had when we were trying mm -hmm. to say, how do we engage with the apartheid regime as Muslims mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, after all that had been done? So there was the, the, the conference that conference was out in Cape Town. And in that conference, it was amazing what was taking place mm -hmm. during that process, you know. We had some brothers standing up and, and, and saying, we can't, we're too small a community mm -hmm. uh, to make an impact and... But we dealt with it from Quran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We dealt with it from the Crucial. Treaty of Hudaybia. We used the Treaty of Hudaybia, what had happened, how and how we saw what what was the instruction, and therefore on that basis mm -hmm. entered into mm -hmm. the negotiating process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because many of us felt, Niman, uh, mm. you know, mm -hmm. I don't turn the other cheek, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. In that process, we need to also, therefore, as Muslims, mm -hmm. engage and let, let's be honest with one mm -hmm. another. People are hiding behind what they had done in the apartheid regime mm -hmm. and misused their position as Muslims, having access to the previous regime mm -hmm. and influencing things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we need to deal with that, Shamila, mm -hmm. yeah. so that we could uh, overcome that hurt as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Because some of us still try to try to deal with it, but mm -hmm. also it's not picky quite, mm -hmm. yeah. because they did it in the name of Islam. Yeah. yeah. And it was wrong. It is wrong. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree, Auntie Bibi. I think that we're only human, mm -hmm. even though as much as we say that you have to lighten your ruh, you have to forgive, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, you, you, you still have a little bit of anger. Mm -hmm. People deal differently with the anger. Mm -hmm. But for us, we are part of this country. We are a nation. Mm -hmm. And we are Muslim. Mm -hmm. Some of us by birth. Others, you know, by embracing. by embracing Islam and coming into the deen. But at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning, we all a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Every living organism on, on, on this dunya is, is, is a creation of the Almighty. And therefore... Um, You know, what Auntie Bibi had said, yes, there is people that benefited from those days. Mm -hmm. But we need to deal with that. But we have to be honest with ourselves. Also, mm -hmm. within our own communities, we have our own prejudices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can we build a nation mm -hmm. when within our own communities, within our own families, mm -hmm. there is all these differences? Sure. And that we cannot blame on apartheid. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I think that, there's a sense of yeah. personal responsibility. Yes where people need to stand yeah. in the mirror and say, I am responsible yes. for X, yes. Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And if the person needs to be apologetic yep. or come and yep. ask for forgiveness, let that be so. Let us start to yep. build bridges so yep. that the forgiveness process becomes yep. easier. I want to ask you, in, because we are in the last segment, to quickly touch for us on, um, can you, you touched earlier on the, the principles of social mm -hmm. cohesion. Can you just elaborate for us? I'm just going to do it briefly, and it's a document that was done when discussions were going on with regards to how we're going to build a nation and social cohesion. cohesion. Mm -hmm. and, and what it says here is, and I'm going to read it to you, and it says, nation building in the sense and in the context of South Africa cannot be perpetuated of the hierarchies of the past based on pre-given or if ethnical, engineered and imposed divisions of people rooted in prejudice, discrimination and exclusion. So what this basically see, and if you look at the Islamic context of, of, of what it is that you have a prejudice, that you discriminate, that mm -hmm. is your ego, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? That is your nafs. So as individuals, it starts with us. We mm -hmm. have to deal with our nafs mm -hmm. first, with our egos, to think I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. And, 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 You know, and that is when we can start building. But it starts within your own home, within your own families. Mm -hmm. And you go and you look at families today. Mm -hmm. Brother and sister, uncle and, 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 mm -hmm. and niece and nephew and whoever is, I'm better than you mm -hmm. because I'm accumulating. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. mindset now is we're free, okay? Mm -hmm. We're free, we can do business. Mm -hmm. And 
we can accumulate as much as we want, mm -hmm. but I don't want the same for my brother and mm -hmm. my sister. It's almost like a competitive kind yes. of outlook. So how can you build a cohesive society mm -hmm. when you can't build a cohesive family? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is the mindset, it is the nafs. As much as we, we, we say that we follow mm -hmm. Quran and Sunnah, mm -hmm. we talk about and, you know, we, we wear the dress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the outer, mm -hmm. but we don't wear what the inner. What is the in on going on on the inside? We mm -hmm. don't wear the inner. And mm -hmm. we then we ask and we say, but why does my domestic helper rob me of, of my jewellery, mm -hmm. you know? Why does my, um, the person that comes and does my garden, you know, steal my scissors or something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Because I don't have heart. Mm -hmm. That person is suffering, mm -hmm. okay? I don't treat him like a human being. I don't see him as a human being. Mm -hmm. I see him as a lesser human being. Mm -hmm. So how can you build that that person love you and love your deen? It's a concept of Ubuntu, exactly. in, in, in other words. Just quickly, I just quickly want to say this. You know, the, the, the people talk about the, the first sin or the original sin and the tree and the apple and the story. For me, it's Habil Kabil. Mm -hmm. It's about two brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and what was done in that time, you mm -hmm. know. So we need to look at it from that point of view so that we can move past it mm -hmm. and inshallah heal because to divide is easier than mm -hmm. to unite. Than to unite. And, and the uh, uniting is the social cohesion, uniting, you know, mm -hmm. everybody across mm -hmm. the board in your street, in your neighbourhood, not being selective. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it touches for me a lot on the overcoming yeah. of the ego because the greatest struggle in the way of Allah is, is, is mastery over the self. And I mean, it, and it cuts for me both ways. As much as we, we talk about the, um, um, the accumulation of wealth, mm -hmm. on the one hand, mm -hmm. is, is for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, the wealth is, the responsibility in having that wealth is not lived up to for many. Sure. Um, there's also the inferiority complex yeah. that others are sitting with. And all of that needs to sort of come together for us, in, in my humble view, that we need to yeah. move forward. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Um, what I would, um, in, in my conclusion, like to say is I think we all need mm -hmm. to be able to label what it is that we are feeling, what apartheid has done to us. We need to be, have, be able to have a platform where we can express the hurt, the anger. All these issues need to be voiced. It needs to be validated and heard. And I think we need to come to a place of acceptance. We were chosen for this. Because once you have released all this emotional build, build up, is you can come to that place of saying, I accept this is my purpose. This is what Allah Ta'ala has chosen for me. And then to take from there, what do I still need to do about it? How can we now learn from this? And that is for me the message that you have brought uh, to our viewers, to myself here today. And I thank you once again for being with us today. Um, thank you, Auntie Bibi. If there's any closing statements you will quickly would like to share with us. One last thing for me is that we were created by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to serve Him. Mm -hmm. And if we serve the Creator, we serve humanity. Mm -hmm. So I would like to close with that. I thank you. I thank you so much. Once again, we have come to the end of today's program. From myself, Adila, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.